Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for HP Discover. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm with Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org, chief analyst, and of course, we're here with David Scott, man of the hour, uh, senior vice president of storage, uh, general manager of HP Storage, up on keynote. So much demand, they're bringing up another keynote. Welcome back to theCUBE again. Thanks, son. Great to be here. Uh, every time we interview you, you're always like the star of the show. Every earnings <laughs> announcement, oh, three par. So, as Dave always says, it's the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> at HP. So, um, tell us, what's hot today? Obviously, you know, I mentioned about the keynotes. Um, why is all the action on, on HP storage right now? What's the hot button? Well, I, I think we've uh, just introduced another revolution in the storage industry. Um, you know, a lot of people have been uh, using kind of all flash arrays, uh, solid state drives, but, but really for niche application usage today. And, and the question on everybody's mind is, you know, when will the tipping point occur? When will we turn around and see all flash arrays able to replace uh, kind of traditional high-end tier one arrays, hybrid arrays, as mainstream enterprise application, for mainstream enterprise application usage? And, uh, and yesterday, we announced the capabilities that allow that exact thing to happen with our all flash 7450 uh, array. So it's exciting for me because uh, when I started working with Dave almost five years ago, storage was at the certainly changing and flash, we were there from day one of the whole revolution of flash. It continues to be hot. We've been at all the shows, we've heard all the FUD and you know, it's good to get the word out but I want to just share with you a lot of folks throwing in you know, daggers here and there, shooting bullets at HP, oh HP storage, you know what's going on, they don't really have a flash story, it's been kind of the FUD. So I want you to, to one, and talk about that comment, and then you know why you guys are so hot right now in Flash, and, and how do you talk about? Because this is your time to shine. Sure. Well, well, you know, if you look at the all Flash market, uh, there are three things that really need to take place to uh, allow you to replace mainstream enterprise application deployments on high-end hybrid arrays. Uh, it's first of all, it's got to be fast. You've got to be able to pr deliver kind of low response times, predictable response times. And that's exactly what we do with the 3 pass 7450. 900,000 IOs, less than 0.7 millisecond response time. Uh, the second thing you've got to do is make it affordable. The, the reason why all flash hasn't taken off is it's too expensive, much more expensive than standard uh, high performance hard disk drives. Uh, and uh, with the announcements that we made yesterday, uh, we introduced a new 1.9 terabyte uh, consumer MLC drive uh, plus inline deduplication uh, technology we call thin deduplication. Uh, and in combination, we can now support um, a, a price point uh, that is less than $2 per usable gigabyte. Uh, it means we've reached really the tipping point where it's more inexpensive to choose an all flash array than it is to uh, you know, uh, choose an array with spinning disk. Uh, and then finally, uh, we've made it enterprise class scalable and resilient. Uh, we have some uh, new, unique, uh, patented express indexing software in 3PAR that allows us to put 240 drives or, or 460 uh, raw terabytes of capacity in a single array. And with thin deduplication, we get between 4 to 1, 10 to 1 uh, compaction ratios. So that 460 terabytes turns into a 1.4 terabyte scalable platform. Really true enterprise scalability. And of course, the benefit of the three-par architecture is it's proven, it's always been mission critical, tier one architecture. Uh, and to make people feel safe about going into the all-flash world, we've just backed it with five-year warranties for our new MLC drives and a get six nines guarantee program, i.e. we're guaranteeing that in a quad controller configuration, you'll have 99.9999% availability. That's what makes us the first all flash array ever to be suitable for mainstream enterprise applications. So one of the things we talked about, uh, um, variety of events we've been to, the uh, OpenStack, a lot of the big data events, is it got a lot of unstructured data, there's a huge tsunami of unstructured data coming to the market. Also you have structured for transactional-like processes. 
Um, and, and a lot of people, the, the high priests and the smart guys in the industry are saying there's no one trick pony for flash. Meaning you got to address the IOPS throughput and cost per gigabyte because not everyone's you know, storing unstructured data for low latency. So you have to have the breadth of use cases. Talk about that dynamic. Is there a one trick pony for flash or do you have to be multi-purpose in the sense of having the, the performance at those three levels? Well, I think you, you, uh, you know, in a sense, if you look at the, the niche applications that Flash went after initially, uh, you had people going for high performance database optimization where low latency was really important. Uh, and then you had some of the Flash startups focusing on trying to be more general purpose, but really their systems only had the resiliency that could support kind of small to mid-sized businesses and scalability. But if you want to go into the mass of the multi-billion dollar market space, you really have to have a platform that, that can do everything. Uh, and that is what we've delivered with a 3 pass store serve 7450, uh, a platform that is, uh, provides optimized solutions for databases, uh, for uh, the ability to f store files, uh, for the ability to support server virtualization and VDI, bringing it all together in something that enterprises can really trust and rely. Have you heard about some of the warranty issues around Flash? A lot of people were initially considering Flash, okay, they'll overpay, but there's some media issues around reliability. Uh, is that going away, and what do you guys have done on the reliability side with the warranties around that? Are you still maintaining your yeah. levels of service? Well, actually, you know, we've now had um, more than uh, kind of four years experience with uh, uh, flash storage in uh, uh, our three power arrays. And because we have our very sophisticated remote support capabilities, we can actually understand what is happening to those flash drives uh, from a where perspective. Uh, and our architecture has always been highly optimized for flash because we use system-wide uh, 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 striping. Uh, we have various techniques that optimize or rather minimize the amount of uh, where uh, that occurs on those flash drives. And that's given us the confidence, even on these new consumer MLC drives, to be able to deliver um, uh, five-year warranties. Um, and being able to put our money where our mouth is, uh, make sure people feel confident that they can deploy all flash and have their data safe. Yeah, five-year warranties and six nines. I mean, when you talk to customers, they're, they're worried about cost and they're worried about the reliability of flash. So you're putting your money where your mouth is there. The, a lot of people will say, well you said, hey we don't have to go out and buy another all flash array company yeah. like EMC did, like IBM did. Uh, we have a flexible architecture that allows us to uh, uh, optimize for flash. We called it polymorphic. It was poly polymorphic. polymorphic. I love that. Right. Okay, so there was a you know, interesting debate still going on in the industry. Oh, you know, he says, he says she says, only time is going to tell. Um, what gives you confidence that this is not a bolt on, as you used to say, within provisioning to some of your competitors. Right. You said it as a gentleman. You're, right. you're very good when you talk about your competitors and you smile as you rip them apart. But um, what gives you confidence that this is not going to play out like some of your competitors bolting on features that you guys popularized um, with Flash? Well, so first of all, if you look at some of the, the Flash uh, storage startups uh, right now, um, they really don't have the enterprise scale or resiliency. You know, someone who's particularly vocal right now, pure storage. Mm -hmm. um, but, but let's look at a, an environment where you're in mainstream enterprise application usage. You want a petabyte scale array. On a 7450, as I just described, you can support 1.4 petabytes. But what's the pure storage penalty to, to meet the same need? First of all, uh, you're going to need six arrays that you have to manage to get to that 1.4 petabyte scale. Um, you're going to have a price point that is twice as expensive uh, as a 3 par 7450. Uh, they haven't been able to break the price point of $2 a gigabyte, which is really the key of meeting the price point of high performance hard disk drives. And you're going to have a worse platform that doesn't have quad controller, high availability. It doesn't have synchronous remote replication, so you can you know, guarantee no transaction loss if you have a system failure. There are a whole host of kind of sophisticated HA capability that simply doesn't exist. So you get a worse solution for higher costs and more management overhead. Now, me for one, having been CEO of 3PAR and taken a private company public, that is not a value proposition that I'd like to take to investors on a pre-IPO roadshow. So the, so the big thing about 3PAR that I see, the, 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 to me the number one advantage, you gotta, the, you know, the cost is a, is a check, check you gotta be there or you're not gonna sell any. Um, you gotta have the reliability. To me it's the stack, is what you bring to the table. 
Um, and if you can meet those other two, then you, I think you're going to do some serious damage. So talk about the importance of, of the stack. Why is it that you have the stack and others don't? Explain well, the that. advantage we have of the stack is that even though we're a modern architecture designed for this century, um, we have had the experience of kind of 10 to 12 years runtime. So we have a very high quality, uh, proven resilient foundation and we built a functionality that allows us to integrate into all of the leading environments, whether it's VMware, Microsoft, uh, into SAP, HANA, uh, on a, all of the, the key environments that anybody who is a, a large enterprise customer will want to deploy. Uh, and so our snapshot integration goes into platforms like Oracle, amongst other things. Uh, and that comprehensive solution stack on top of a really robust infrastructure that we can provide with 3PAR is what allows us to, to uh, deliver mainstream enterprise application support. Yeah, it's hard to build a hardened storage stack. Um, okay, let, I want to talk about specifically about Extreme IO. EMC says, architectures matter. Right? And we went out, we bought the best architecture out there. How do you respond to that? Yeah, well, if you look at uh, an extreme I.O. architecture, you know, I, I, it supports a remarkably small amount of storage capacity. I, I can't remember, is it 20, 40 ter terabytes? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's uh, chunks. Uh, on a single, but, but on a single system, we support 460 raw terabytes. But they so would let's argue just do the math. Out, right? They would argue yeah, scale out, right? So you're so. already at a scale out of 20 before <laughs> okay. to, to basically match. And so you, now you've got 20 devices so that the issue you're is complexity basically there, you would argue, starting right? to manage. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so it's, a, it's a real challenge, and it has none of the end price scale resiliency built in uh, to those uh, to the architectures uh, at all. In fact, I, I, I felt it was quite a surprising choice actually uh, for a, an acquisition to make because Extreme IO wouldn't have been up there on my. But you would buy uh, VMAX list. to get that stack, which, which leads me to my next, my next point, which is to me this is a redefinition of what Tier One is all about. Do you agree with that? Yeah, that's right. Because if if you look at where people deploy mainstream enterprise applications, if it's not on HP three par, it's going to be on one of our kind of major high end competitors. It's going to be something like. You know, EMC VMAX um, uh, running in a hybrid uh, auto tiered configuration with flash disk drives, maybe 5% hard disk drives. But if you look at the VMAX tax that that costs, in order to, let's say, a two, deliver a 250 usable terabyte comparison with a, a 7450, um, you're going to pay four times as much for a VMAX uh, 10,000. Uh, it's going to take 25 times more space in your data center, uh, and it's going to take eight times more power to deliver less predictable performance because it's using auto tiering between disks and hard disk drives, rather than uh, disks and solid state, rather than an all flash array. Uh, so, you know, again, that, you know, the, the difference between that is so huge. In fact, I, th I think a comparative difference that I could point to would be back at the start of the 20th century when you compared buggy whips <laughs> with automobiles. I mean, it's about as chalk and cheese as that. <laughs> All right, so, I, I mean, the, the fundamental issue is for, for everybody who is considering refreshing their VMAX technology now, you know, there is a better alternative. There is a mainstream all flash array with HP 3 pup that can meet their needs better than anything that EMC can provide, or for that matter, other vendors like IBM or Hitachi. I want to I pick your brain as a Silicon Valley C CEO. Um, I, I, a lot of times I think 3PAR doesn't get enough credit uh, for what was built. Uh, and I think the reason was it, the, 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 the buyout happened so fast, you know? And so, but 3PAR and data domain, and, and maybe some others, but those really stood out. And now you've told me a number of times that the amount of money that you had to raise to be successful was enormous. I forget what the exact number was, but it was. We raised about 183 million when we were private. So 183 million when you were private, and then you did the public Another offering. Another 90 million yeah, when okay. we went public. So you see Pure with a $3 billion valuation, they've raised 250 million. So Just in the last round. In the last round, right. And so in, in total, it's it's north of that? Four, 500 right million, something okay, like that. So, so is that the right approach? Uh, because they need that war chest to take take others on, uh, or are these valuations, you know, a little bit ahead of their skis? Well, I I, I, I got to tell you, I think it's an incredibly rich valuation for a company that is still, you know, apparently making losses. Otherwise, you'd expect it to have kind of gone to to be public. And and you know, um, one of the interesting things about the startup industry is that you really need to have. Um, more than the average two-year head start that a startup has. Um, when we were 3PAR, we actually were very lucky because coming out of the gate, we, uh, went pub uh, we uh, started launching into a recession. And a recession has a really interesting effect because it, it uh, takes away 
uh, other startups who aren't well funded, so you have less competition. Uh, and it also cuts the R&D investments for some of the major storage companies, so they can't catch up with the innovation that you bring to market. And so your time to market advantage balloons from maybe two years to four years, and that four years tends to be enough to get escape velocity. But if you don't have a recession, and you just have the two year advantage, you're always susceptible to a major company if they have the right architecture coming back at you. And that's exactly what has happened in this case. You know, the all flash startup array vendors emerged around two years ago. And literally with today's announcement, with a three pass store serve 7450, we have really put an end to the need for niche flash siloed startups. So this is one of the more interesting answers we've heard to are there, is there overvaluation in the flash? The, your premise is they, they won't have the escape velocity to, to get out as far in front of you guys and the EMCs yeah. and the IBMs and, and everybody else as you did because of that dynamic of the dot com. Um, bubble burst. And, and I, I actually don't think that, that there's any way that you, they could get into a public market at a $3 billion valuation at, at this stage of the company. It's going to be a very, very long wait now for them to be able to catch up to that valuation. All right, we got to end it there, David. All right. Thank David, you. Thanks for coming on. Uh, final question. Share the folks in your own words. Because um, we've interviewed you over the past multiple years, lots changed. What's been the significant change in, in, in short for the past four years in storage? What has been the big, big shift in, that you could digest down into a soundbite? Uh, all flash arrays arriving. <laughs> big time, faster than you thought? Big time. <laughs> okay, David Scott, uh, Senior Vice President, General Manager of HP Storage, changing the game here. Always continue to move the needle. Big growth engine for HP, great to have you on theCUBE again. We'll be right back after this short break. Thanks, John. Thank, Thank you, David. You.